Hello, it is Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle, a themed puzzle, and um, perhaps a particularly interesting one because I was just glancing at the Daily Solve Discord chat server and FlogChamp in the New York Times Crossword Channel said, what a delightful Wednesday puzzle. The theme is brilliant. And Sfumato said, agreed. So I'm very excited. That honestly, honestly does increase my anticipation of determining the theme and solving this puzzle and seeing what is so delightful about it. Anyway, this delightful edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Joe Percy, Joseph Schwalbach, and as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for supporting this channel and making this a sustainable part of my daily work. So I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can uh, head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or follow the link in the description field underneath the video. And for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. You can also get an extra channel in that Daily Solve Discord chat server, but you won't need that in order to read those comments by FlogChamp and Sumato because um, the the essentially the uh, Discord server is free. So there's a link in the description field underneath the video to join that as well. And um, do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you're enjoying this. Oh, I haven't mentioned recently, if you do become a benefactor of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which is uh, one of the higher levels, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. Um, anyway, okay, let's, let's get on to the puzzle. How about that? This is a debut construction. So we have two debuts in a row. Here's another by Rob Baker. Rob Baker's first New York Times crossword puzzle, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what we have in store for us. Oh, interesting. There is a single, there is a single circled cell, just one. And it's the end of the quip. So we're going to be spelling out a quotation, almost certainly. This is a, this is a thing that happens in the New York Times crossword occasionally. Haven't actually seen, haven't seen one recently. So that'll be fun. <clears throat> anyway, buds could be friends or pals or something like that, but I, I don't know. Uh... Okay, it could be pals, because rights could be pens, um, in the sense that Rob Baker has penned this crossword. Uh, slews. Offs? Or, no, it doesn't fit. Um, axes, perhaps. There we go. Tibetan spiritual leader would be a lama, in the sense of the priest. The 2L lama. That's a beast. The one El Lama, he's a priest. Goes to the Ogden Nash verse. I may have had that reversed. I don't remember. Um, buds are pals, and pizz, uh, uh, pizzazz is alon, so panache or style. Epitably, epitome of slowness is a slugs? No. A snail? Oh, no, sorry. I, this isn't axes, because... Pizzazz is Elan, which I said, but then didn't really pay attention to what to to visually. So slews, I don't know. Oh, slews as in a lot of something. Right, not as in slew an opponent or something like that, uh, which would be slays anyway, sorry. <clears throat> I was just completely wrong in many different ways. <laughs> All over this corner of the grid, I apologize. So epitome of slowness is indeed a snail, yes. Okay, start of a punny quip with two correct answers. No man is an island, maybe? Although, that's not very punny. Well, no, although maybe it is. Because it says a punny quip, and it's the start of it. So, if this were the entire quip, no man is an island isn't a, a punny quip. It's just a direct quote from John Donne. But, um, if this is just part one, the, the quippy bit, or the punny bit, could come in the additional uh, portion. So let's leave that for now and see if the crosses work. To step up or down is a stair. Oh, maybe not. Aid in busing would be a tray. Okay, never mind. This is probably going to be no matter because this is a T. 
So there's tray, so no matter something. An oversight could be a lapse in judgment. I had a bit of a la mental lapse over here several times, actually. Cousin blank, the Adams family member. Cousin it. I don't remember who cousin it is exactly, but I remember that name with the two T's. Is cousin it the hand, maybe? All right. Agatha Christie blank Miller. Um, presumably that was Agatha Christie's maiden name. So Agatha Christie, nay Miller, Agatha Christie born Agatha Miller. Blank Empire, a.k.a. the realm of the four parts. The Inca Empire, I, I would think. And here we have blank DM, carpe DM, seize the day, I say. Arthur blank, 1975 Wimbledon win winner. Arthur Ashe, the great American tennis player. And what is this? Cup and saucer luncheons are teas. Yes, indeed. You could have tea. You could have a, that sort of luncheon. Okay. So this looks like no matter how something... And back in the day would be old, maybe, in the sort of archaic spelling. I'm not confident about that, so let's check the crosses. No, not. I was right to be unconfident. So here we have Phnom Penh City, and back in the day once, that makes more sense. Woodcutter's prop, a sawhorse to keep things stable. And word with bar or bowl, you could have a salad bowl or a salad bar. Spot for many a mom tattoo. One's arm, I suppose. Singer Rawls, Lou Rawls is a singer, great singer. And a theater chain or cable channel. Oh, um, AMC is a U.S. Uh, cinema chain in the sense of a theater, cinema theater, and also a uh, cable television network. Okay, Dit's counterpart, Dit and Da are the, are the um, that's the terminology used for the, the uh, uh, sound of the dot and dash in Morse code. And hot apple pie has one aroma. Fair enough, I suppose it does. It's a very specific clue, but not inaccurate. So, okay, so no matter how much is the beginning of our punny quip. Nothing to do with islands or, or men being or not being them. Aloof with. You're cold to somebody, you're aloof with them, perhaps? A fictional character who dreams about heffalumps, Winnie the Pooh, who apparently has entered the public domain as of this calendar year. Um, Disney has, has lost the copyright on Winnie the Pooh due to the length of time, presumably since the death of its creator, A.A. Milne. Positive response to agree. Sure do, perhaps? I'm not sure. That seems a little bit vague. Part two of the quip, no matter how much you, well, that looks correct, actually, no matter how much you something. Squid predator would be an orca, that makes sense. Head to the office. Head to the office. My first thought, because I've been solving um, a particularly brutal cryptic, cryptic crossword this week, this week's listener crossword, which I have to say, this week's edition of the listener is probably the single most difficult puzzle I've attempted to solve Ever. <laughs> anyway, um, head to the office. So anyway, because of that, I was thinking head to the office would be the first letter, perhaps, of office. Head to the office because of the question mark, but it doesn't seem to work. So what is it actually? Oh, it's no, it's a CEO. It's the head of the office in, in this case, but it's being said in a punny way to throw us off the scent. And that's what the question mark is doing there. It's indicating a bit of punnery or wordplay. Okay, blank May Mortgage Company. Fannie Mae is a... Um, Federal mortgage guarantor or something in, in the U.S., something like that. Um, don't remember ex exactly. I knew at one point what Fannie Mae was, but now I can't remember. Uh, travel to an island in a way. Ferried. We might take a ferry to an island. And some exams. Oh. Um, maybe aloof with isn't cold to, but rather cool to or on. Uh, two looks more likely with those crosses. Yeah, that's a better that's a better fit anyway. But cold is a bit strong for aloof. Some exams would be orals, oral exams. Skedaddled would be what? Left you? Mm, not sure. Conical shelter could be a TP, literally a shelter shaped uh, into a cone. If you're wanting no more, say you're sated. You've had your fill. And the thing that is most unusual is the oddest thing. Okay, 
uh, files a petition, you could sue somebody, file a petition. And Lunar New Year is the Tet uh, uh, holiday. And skedaddled is what? Lit out? Is that? I don't think I know that phrase, actually. Um, anyway, here's part three of our quip. So no matter how much you push the envelope, there we go. And then, so this is going to lit out. Okay, I just don't think I'm familiar with that terminology for running away, I suppose, or dashing or something like that. One's ordering lab tests. Vets. So the question mark here, again, is cluing us into a bit of punnery or wordplay. So uh, you'd think lab tests would, recur would refer to a laboratory test, but instead it's referring to a Labrador test, a dog. So a vet might order a test for a Labrador. And part four of the quip, right, no matter how much you push the envelope, it's something. Okay, so this will be this will be a pun that involves probably literal envelopes of paper objects. Meal. Uh, repast would be a meal. And Peter Sarsgaard's role in 2016's Jackie, for short. I never saw Jackie, but that would be about uh, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, the um, wife of the late uh, John F. Kennedy. And so three letters starting with an R is probably RFK, Robert Kennedy, the president's brother. And 2D blank, 2D fruity is the name of a classic rock and roll song, although it's not in question marks here, or sorry, not in quotation marks here, so it probably doesn't refer to that and refers to, I guess, just the phrase unto itself, perhaps. I think there might be an ice cream flavor named that at some chain, so maybe it's a brand name. Anyway, Blank Cousins, 1964 Elvis film. Uh, well, Kissing Cousins is a phrase, so is this maybe Kissin', perhaps, with the um, contraction at the end there? Children's author Carl or Carly. Oh, Eric Carl. I think the, the Very Hungry Caterpillar or something something like that. Um, don't remember exactly what story Eric Carl wrote, but I do recognize the name and I think it might be that one or something like that. Okay. 10 for, um, it's what you say over the radio when sort of things are, f you have heard something or you accept it or you're on the way or something like that. I'm not sure exactly certain. Let's check the crosses. Disoriented would be at sea. To continue with something would be to stick to it. Uh, to play around is to tinker with something. There we go, to play around with it. 10-4, check. Okay, fair, fair enough. And to come under fire, literally or figuratively, take flack, maybe? You could take flack in a literal sense, uh, in a combat scenario, or metaphorically, you could just, you know, be weathering criticism. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not 100% confident of that, so let's let's do some solving around here and see if we can firm that up. Heroin Prior of the Divergent series. Oof, not a single clue. Um, drop a line. Not sure about that either. Maybe I should... Here, why don't I do something I almost never do? and <laughs> Use the pencil tool to type in take flag. That's a th just so you are aware. Uh, you can toggle between the pen and the pencil, and the pencil is used to enter um, answers about which you're a bit less certain. So you want to remind yourself that these aren't these aren't um, entered with great confidence. Okay, Philippine coins could be pesos, and Ed Asner role in 20, 2003's Elf. I never saw Elf, but Ed Asner surely would have played Santa Claus in that film. I have to imagine London's blank square. Uh, is it Soho Square? You'd think sitting here in London that would be a uh, slam dunk, but um, boy, speaking of sitting here in London, it is very hot. <laughs> I keep the window closed when I'm doing this recording, um, and so it is quite hot in this room. Devise as plot. As a plot. Hatch a plot. There we go. Rips. Rips five letters. Is this telling us we have a, a rebus here? Is that saying this is five letters, so we must fit five letters into four cells 
and therefore we need to put a rebus into this cell? Is that I, I'm not sure if that's what's being communicated here. Um, I'll explain what I just did because every time a rebus appears in one of these videos, there is at least someone in the comments who is surprised to see that it exists, which is completely understandable because you wouldn't assume such a thing would exist. Um, a rebus in the context of the New York Times, as opposed to the broader meaning of that word in puzzle solving more generally, uh, is when you put more than one letter into a single cell in the crossword grid. And there's a rebus function that you can uh, toggle on off to enter um, letters into such cells. And there's no way to know when uh, this is required of you. You just need to infer it from the puzzle. They're rare. Uh, it's not, I think it's maybe one, someone actually, a, a, a viewer actually, a community member posted in a comment a fairly intricate breakdown and in-depth breakdown of um, commonality of rebuses in New York Times crosswords. And I think it's something like one out of every 20 puzzles, perhaps something around 5% has a rebus. So not, they're not common, but they're not vanishingly rare either. Anyway, I'm wondering if that's what this means. I've never seen a clue before that actually this clearly indicates that a rebus exists. Ordinarily, you have to infer it on your own. Um, so I'm not certain that's what's going on here, but that's my guess. And it would make sense that it would be in this, the one circled cell in the puzzle. So anyway, um, stumble. Yeah, okay. Stumble could be trip, indeed. And regarding could be as to. Lit crit, literary criticism, and shot for short would be a hypo, as in hypoallergenic needle. So here, what do we have? End of the quip. Or no, sorry, no, hypodermic. Hypodermic needle, sorry, hypoallergenic is a different thing. Um, but I don't really know what this is doing. Um, let's keep going. Terrible twos, e.g., is a phase in child rearing. Home of 66 across, and 66 across is where shampoo is invented. I don't know. In five letters, if this does indeed end in A, my guess would be China. Oh, and that makes sense because the home of China would be Asia. Okay, so there we go. Something dispensed with in business casual would be a tie. Hence the casual bit. Actor McShane is Ian McShane. And many a, many a driver's ed and rollie would be a teen, a teenager. Right now would be stat. Oh, and to drop a line is to fish, to to attempt to catch a fish, to fish, to drop a fishing line in this case. So take flack, I think was probably correct. We'll put fish in there. So I've overwritten our penciled cells with pen. Um, heroin prior of the Divergent series. I don't know, tricks or tris or tria. End of the quip. No matter how much you push the envelope, it's still stationary. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Very clever. No matter how much you push the envelope, it's still stationary. Um, because, of course, it is literally stationary. In other words, um, the sort of accoutrement used in, in writing and, and uh, letter writing and that sort of thing. Now, but what does this mean? Sorry, I'm probably missing something here. Let's just keep solving and we'll figure that out in a moment. So where shampoo is invented, right? I did. I thought China, maybe that seems probably correct. Certain Sib. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's India, which actually, lucky me, is also in, in Asia. Okay, so certain Sib would be sis, sister. An explosive cable channel is TNT. That's another um, US cable television network. So it's funny, we have two of those in this puzzle. Prelude to a kiss could be I do, thing you say before. Uh, kissing at a wedding, and then new driver's acquisition, a license. Oh, all right. So that actually just a little tie into our teen driver's ed and rollie. And stock footage. And there we go. We've solved the puzzle. Okay, so what's going on? Oh, E. So this, uh, this EA has been replaced with an E or A. Oh. So it must be that. So, okay, I see. Sorry. So stationary, 
I think what's going on here is that, and I didn't appreciate this initially, I think stationary with an E is the form of stationary to which I was referring just a moment ago, which is accoutrement, you know, paper, envelopes, uh, uh, sort of letterhead, that kind of uh, letterhead paper, dealing with letter writing and uh, kind of calligraphy and fine writing and that sort of thing. And then stationary with an A is the adjective, meaning um, something is not moving. So no matter how much you push the envelope, it remains a stationary object. It is still, it is, it, it remains, it remains inert. Uh, so there we go. Uh, no matter how much you push the envelope, it is still stationary and it works with each spelling of stationary. And that has happened with rips and rips. I suppose you could indeed rip stationary. You could rip an article of stationary. You could rip an envelope open, in fact. Um, so look at that. <laughs> Indeed, a very delightful, uh, a delightful puzzle, and a funny, a funny little theme in that it, the whole thing is constructed to support this one, um, well, this pun, I suppose. And rather than there being some kind, it's it's interesting because usually the way that you infer the presence of a rebus is because there's something that is there's a, a sort of operation that's being applied a number of times throughout the puzzle, and it relies on there being the ability to enter more than one letter into a given cell. In this case, that isn't the case. It's, all, it's only happening a single time. So sort of by definition, you can't have a repeating mecha a mechanic that only happens a single time. So the whole thing is just being constructed in order to support, uh, in order to maintain the payoff of this one pun. And uh, so it's, it's a very sort of playful theme in that respect and definitely relies on being attuned to <laughs> the uh, vagaries of spelling in the English language, I suppose, uh, which I wasn't for a moment upon first solving and uh, the puzzle and, and getting one sort of tier of this theme. I uh, needed another moment for it to fully sink in. Very well done. Very clever. Wish I would have, wish I would have gotten to the, uh, the conclusion sooner. Uh, sorry for making you wait as I puzzled, puzzled through that bit. But there we have it. A very fun and uh, actually, so we've had two pretty playful themes in a row, actually, I would say, and both debut, both debut construction. So well done to their constructors. Well done, Rob Baker today. That was a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. So having completed today's delightful puzzle, delightful as promised, I think, uh, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And what do we have? Let's see. So Heather Whaley, regarding the term stud, which was referring to breeding, and I think I think I um, referred numerous times to, to cattle breeding, but Heather Whaley says, the term stud is more commonly associated with horse breeding than with cattle farming, although a breeder, the term breeder, is correct for both. Enjoy watching your thought process. Please. So thank you, Heather, for that um, observation. I'm not very educated about those things, so um, I wasn't aware that that was less less often applied to cattle farming. Uh, and Spencer Kim says regarding the theme, coffee jelly, which was one of the one of our our sort of playful phrases in the puzzle, is a Japanese dish. It's tasty, even though it was homemade and I needed to troubleshoot. <laughs> yeah, that was often the case with. Uh, doing something yourself culinarily at home for the first time, I can attest. Anyway, uh, I think that was all I had. There weren't, weren't many corrections from yesterday's puzzle, so I just figured I would, I would read those two, which weren't so much corrections, but just little bits of context and observations, since uh, why not? Might as well. And that's that for today's puzzle. That's that for the Wednesday puzzle, for a um, bit of yesterday's, and for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I hope you join me tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle. And that is the day when we are really likely to get into some serious theme unpacking. Maybe there will be a rebus tomorrow. You never know. Uh, and in any case, do hope you, you come back for that. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.